What's up guys, I'm Rasim from RossmerTech.com and this is another tutorial in Swift programming. Now in this class I'm going to show you guys how to use the for loops. So let's get started. Now what are the for loops? Well a for loop performs a set of statements a certain number of times and Swift provides two types of for loops. The first type of for loop I'm going to show you is called the for in. And the for in performs a set of statements for each item in a range, sequence, collection, or a progression. So let's get started. Now we're going to type in for. This is the keyword for starting off a for loop. We type in for. Now, depending on if you're using an array, if you're going to use a uh, range or something like that, if you want a to restore the value of the loop, uh, you can create a variable next to this. And we, you can name your variable whatever you want. I'm going to call my variable red, right? So now we got to type in the keyword in, right? So this is a for in loop. So the first keyword here is for. Next to this, this is the variable that we created that's going to store the value of our loop. Right, and uh, this is the other keyword that's in. Now, after this, we got to type in what we're testing out, and I'm going to test a range. So I'll show you guys how to use a range, and we're going to use a integer range from one to six. So we start off by typing in one, right, and three dots after it, three periods, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it's going to be from one to six. So basically, what's going to happen here is for uh, in a range of one to six, it's going to do the loop basically six times. And it's going to store the value of the loop in the variable red. So by default, the, the variable, whatever variable you gave it here, by default, it has the value of whatever you initialized, if it's an index. Whatever you initialized it first, the variable starts out with that value. Since we initialized it with a value of 1, the variable red here is going to have a value of 1. So now after this range here, we're going to start a open and close curly brace. So Type in your open and close curly brace and put your cursor in between the open and close curly brace and hit enter a few times. Now this is the body of a for loop here. Now in between this open and closing curly brace is where we're going to type in the statements or the code that we want to execute every time the loop happens. And we're going to print something on the screen every time the loop happens and it's a print line statement. So we're going to hit tab here. I'm going to type in P-R-I-N-T-L-N open and close parentheses. Now in between this open and close parentheses, we're going to type in the variable red because we want to print out the value of variable red. And it, sh it should print out one through six. So let's hit play here and see what happens. Build, build succeeded. And as you can see down here, it printed out one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'll explain why you print it out. Now remember, by default, the variable that stores the value of either your range your sequence, your collection, so on and so forth. This is the variable that you created that stores the value. If it's a array, it will store the value of, of all of the array until it gets to the end. Since we're using a range here, it's going to store the value of the range, and it's by default it's set to the first value. So whatever first value you, you gave it, in, in this case this is a range, and the first value I gave it is a 1, right? So by default it starts out with a 1. So once the computer program starts, red has a value of 1, right? So basically, it's going to go here and just print uh, red because we put the value of red in a print line. And it has the value of 1 to start, so it prints out 1. So that's what we got that down here. So now it loops because uh, it, it should loop 1 to 6. So it goes to value 2. Now the value of variable red has a value of 2. So down here, it's going to print out 2. That's why I printed out 2 here. Then it's going to loop again. Now it's going to go to the value of 3. Variable red is going to have a value of 3. It's going to print out 3. It's going to keep going on until it gets to 6. Once it gets to 6, the loop is going to stop. So that's why we got once we got up to 6, the loop stop. Anything over 6, it's going to stop. So from 1 to 6, it'll print out. So this is how we use the for in loop with a range. Now let me show you how we use a for in loop with an array. So let's just delete this here. So we're going to start off by creating an array. So we, this is going to be a constant array. So we're going to use the constant keyword, which is let. So And we got to give our a variable or array name. And this is going to be called names. And we're going to hit space. Now we created a constant uh, variable right now because we, it's not an array yet. And it's called names. We got to make it equal to this open and close bracket. Once it's equal to this open and close bracket, it automatically changes it to an array. This is like... it. This is, tells the, the program that this is an array, this open and close bracket. And it does this automatically. So that's why Swift School, it does all these type of things automatically. We don't have to do all the, the housekeeping to get it to work. So in between this open and close bracket here, I'm going to uh, create three string values. This array is going to have three string values. Since it's a string value, I'm going to use a set of double quotes. In between a set of double quotes, since this is a name, I'm going to give it a name. And let's call this one John. All right. 
Now I want to add another value. Remember, this is uh, indexed as zero by default. So this is our first value, which is indexed as zero. So after the last uh, double quote here, we're going to add a comma because we want to add more values. That's how we add values to an array. We just add the comma. So now this is going to be another string. So we need another set of double quotes. So two double quotes. In between the two double quotes, I'm going to give it another name, a string name. This one's going to be called KT. All right. So now we have two values. This first value is by default indexed as zero. This next one is indexed as one. So now I'm going to give it a final value. And again, we got to use the comma. And this is also going to be a string. So we can use another set of double quotes. In between the set of double quotes, I'm going to type in another name. Let's make this one Mike. So now we have three names here, three values, John, Katie, and Mike. The first one's indexed as zero. Second one is indexed as one. Third one is indexed as two. Now we created an array. Now let's start the for loop. So we're going to type in four, right? Then uh, we're going to create a, a name for a variable that's going to store the value of, of our uh, loop or our array. So let's call this one name. Now don't get this confused with names because names is the variable we created for our array. This is uh, another uh, variable that I created for just holding the value of our uh, loop which is going to store the value of our arrays, basically. So this is not the same as this. This is a whole different other uh, variable here that we created. This is names. This is name. And uh, now we can hit space. Now we're going to use the keyword in. Hit space. Now we're going to tell it where it's a point to. It's going to point to our, our array names. So we're going to type in names, N-A-M-E-S. Don't get these two confused. So now we're going to hit space. We're going to use this open and close curly brace. Oops. Open and close curly brace, right? So in between this open and close curly brace, we're going to hit enter a few times. So make sure you put your cursor in between the open and close curly brace and hit enter a few times. So now in between the open and close curly brace, I'm going to hit tab. Now we're going to print something out on the screen. Every time the loop happens, it's going to print something out on the screen. So we're going to use the print line uh, method to do that. So we're going to type in P-R-I-N-T-L-N, open and close parentheses. And I want to print out the value of name, N-A-M-E. Remember, name is not the array names. This is something completely different. And uh, name just stores our value of each loop. Every time we loop, it's going to st start off by default with the value of John, right? So since we pointed it to this array name names, it's going to start with the value of John. So every time the loop happens, it's going to update the name. So once the loop happens once, it's, then it's going to be Katie. The second time, it should be Mike. So that's why we're going to print out the value of name. And I misspelled it here, so it's N. A M E. Hope you guys don't get confused because of the, uh, the similarity between name and names. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this red here just so you guys don't get confused. This is the variable red that I created. Variable red is going to store the value of each loop. It's going to start off with the value of the first value in the this array here. And the first value is John. So it's going to start off with a value of John. So now we're saying for in this array here, it's going to point to this array and it's going to give automatically this variable the first value. Now we're just going to change this print line so it prints out the value of red, the new variable we created. Now uh, let's hit play and see what happens. We're going to hit play, build succeeded, and as you can see down here, it first printed out John, then it printed out Katie, then it printed out Mike, and it stopped there. Remember, the for in loop works with ranges, sequence, collections, and progression. So I showed you um, arrays and I showed you ranges so you guys uh, could figure out the rest on your own and uh, let me just walk you through the process of this one more time again we created this array up here right and now we started this for loop this for loop it points to this array because I added it right here the array names before I showed you a range we added a range a integer range but now I, I created a array and I used this array name so by default, we created this variable red, and uh, it's going to store the value of the first uh, array here, and it's pointing to array name, so the first value should be John. So that's why when we printed uh, John first, then the loop happened again, then it automatically uh, gave the, this array red a value of Katie. So then when we got to this line again, it printed out Katie, then the loop happened again, then it updated this uh, variable with Mike, then I printed out Mike. So so since Mike is the last value of this array, it stopped and this, the loop stopped. So that's why we, we printed out John, Katie, and Mike. All right, guys. Now, if you guys don't need the value of your loop, uh, you, you don't have to put one. You can just use this underscore instead of a variable name. 
and it it won't uh, return a value of your loop. So if you guys don't need the value of your loop, use the underscore instead of the variable name, and the loop will still work. So now I'm going to show you guys the second part of a for loop. This is called the for condition increment. So let's just delete this here. All right, so this is going to be the structure for our for condition increment. This is the second part of a for loop in Swift. We're going to start off by typing for, hit space. Now uh, we're going to initialize. This first part is called initialize. So we're going to initialize a variable. I'm going to use the VAR keyword to initialize a variable. We've got to give our variable a name. I'm going to call my variable red. Let's make it equal to, uh, let's say, zero. So we're initializing the value first. This is like setting the counter to a value. So the next part, we got to add a semicolon after this, by the way. After this statement here, this is, again, this part here is the initializer. And then we have to add a semicolon at the end of this here. So now after this semicolon, we're going to hit space. Now the second part is a condition. we got to give it a condition to test. So, so the loop knows when to stop. So we're basically, we're going to say red here. Then we're going to say less than. Then we're going to say six. And end it with a semicolon. This is the condition. So basically, the loop is going to continue until uh, red is no longer less than six. So basically, when a loop gets to six and over, loop stops. So now we're going to add the third part. The third part is either increment or decrement. In this case, we're going to increment. So to increment, we're going to use the plus plus, then our variable name, red. So now that we added that, we got to use this hit space and use this open and close curly brace. In between the open and close curly brace, we're going to put our cursor there and we're going to hit enter a few times. This is the structure of our four condition increment here. So I'll explain it to you exactly what happens. Now in between this open and close curly brace, again, we're going to put statements that we want uh, this to do when the loop happens and it's going to print again. So I wanted to print something out on the screen. So we're going to use the P R I N T L N print line uh, code here. And then we need this open and close parentheses in between the open and close parentheses. I want to print out the value of red. So every time the loop happens, it's going to print out the value of red. So we're going to type in R E D in here in between open and close parentheses. And now let's hit play and see what happens. Let's hit play. Build succeeded, and as you can see down here, it printed out zero, one, two, three, four, five, and printed out six here. So it started out with zero. Remember, we set our uh, variable, we initialized our variable with a value of zero. So we're setting the counter to zero. So that's why it printed out zero first. Then the second part here is the condition. We're testing for conditions. We got we, We're basically telling uh, our for loop when this is condition is no longer met, met that the loop is going to stop. So basically, as long as red is less than six, the loop will continue. Once the variable red is no longer less than six, the loop will stop. So this third part here is called the increment. You can either increment or decrement. In this case, we're incrementing. We just added the plus plus red. You don't need a semicolon after the increment. So every time the loop happens, the variable red is going to be incremented by one. So we started off with zero. Now, I know you guys are thinking uh, that uh, the variable red should have incremented to one, so we should have printed out one first. But remember, depending on where you put uh, the two plus symbols, if you're putting it in front of the variable, it's going to pass the value of the variable, then it's going to increment. So right here, we start off variable red has a value of zero. It tests whether or not uh, red is less than six. So in this case, red is less than six. So it goes on to this part. Now this is the increment part here. This part's going to pass the value to here first, then it's going to increment. So now sh the value should be zero. So that's why it didn't increment first. Now, then once it does that, then it's going to increment. So now once we get back up to here, variable red is going to have a value of one because we incremented before, right? So now it's going to test whether or not a uh, variable red is still less than six. As long as it's less than six, it's going to continue. Then it's going to pass the value of red. Then it's going to print out one. Then it's going to increment because depending again, when you put these plus symbols here, if you put the plus symbols after the, the, the variable name, then it's going to increment first, then pass the value. So that's how we got that there. Now, hopefully you guys are not confused by this. If you guys are confused by this, please uh, message me and I'll try to explain it to you guys. But this is pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rasim from RossMertech.com and thanks for watching.